Good morning and welcome to the Swab Channel, Suffolk Women Owned Businesses. My name is Sue Hall and my company is a small company in Suffolk, Made to Clean. And the idea behind this channel is to showcase some of the amazing women owned businesses that we have here. My guest this morning is Jane Hamilton from janehamilton.com. Hello, Jane. Morning, Sue. Good. Now, thanks for coming along. Um, now, Jane's business is very unique, uh, not just in Suffolk, but everywhere else, because you hand embroider towels, don't you? Yeah. How did that start for you? As a little girl, I've always loved to sew. And when um, I was in London and had my first baby, Isabel, I wanted to give friends of mine um, presents and I'd seen this uh, in this shop in Chiswick, um, a beautiful personalised app handy applique towel mm -hmm. and I thought well I could do that and started to give them as presents to friends and a business was born really um, because people liked them and then asked me to make them for their friends and when I moved to Essex with my two young children I started doing craft fairs and um, still gave them to friends and family and uh, gosh 25 years later I've now got an online shop. So that was a, an interesting journey for you wasn't it because for a long time it wasn't a business as such it was a hobby that paid money yes. really so when yes. you officially made that kind of grown-up leap when was that? It was when I turned 50 the children we were sitting around a family meal and the children said mum you've got so many customers who really like what you do mm. friends and family why don't you do something with it? Why don't you set up a business? And I thought long and hard about it because bringing out, I feel bringing up a family is very important and I didn't want to detract from that. Mm -hmm. um, and what I do is very labour intensive. So I thought, well, they're growing up now. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go. And so decided to set up a company and do things you know, properly. Um, and it's been an exciting journey. Let's have a look at one of your towels in, uh, in a bit more detail. So the, these are beautiful Egyptian cotton, I understand. Yes. Yeah, you always I, source high quality materials. I do. I find um, my background's Marks and Spencers, and I find that quality is really important. Um, because I think if you're selling something, people have got to know that it lasts. Um, and so I wash the fabrics beforehand to make sure they don't run, and the, the letters have to be cut very well. It sounds easy, but it's it is an easy process, but it's a difficult process to do well. Mm -hmm. um, and um, then they are appliqued uh, with a domestic machine, and um, and I can do a gift wrapping service as well. And people tend to ask me to do strange things. Um, you've got the the towels on the site on the website and the and the colours. Um, but for example, last week I was asked to personalise pennies for somebody. Um, someone was having a birthday party, and so they they, they wanted a, an apron. Mm -hmm. um, or lots of different things. I've I've yes. I think when you sew, you you are always asked to to make things, which is really fun, which is great fun. I I I love that bit, um, and I would like to grow the business and, and do other things as well. Oh, so the business has got a plan for the future. Yes. That's exciting. Yes. So, I mean, taking it from um, what was just a hobby and a passion for sewing, yes. obviously, into a fully sort of e-commerce website, if you like, mm -hmm. that was a huge leap. And you're, you're one of these women that I like to call the tabletop women because you start it on, in, literally in your kitchen yes. and it just grows from there. Yes. And how many people have you got working with you now? I've got, I've trained up three people. Um, I found that bit hard. Mm. Um, and I've, well, I was on Radio Suffolk and I, I interviewed about 70 people, all of whom had skills. Um, but it um, it requires more than just skill because it's I've, you're up against a time frame, mm -hmm. um, so a little bit of pressure, um, but not too much. And um, it, it, it takes you can tell by someone sitting at a sewing machine whether they're going to be good, whether they're going to want to do it. Um, anyway, I've got three lovely sewers, and um, so between us, we 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 um, fulfil the orders, um, and I would like to grow that very much so um, because well, I haven't tapped the, the market properly yet. This is the thing: when you start to outsource, you you can't compromise the quality, can you? So you've got to, that quality control is paramount. It for, is. Well, for your customers, you've established yeah. a level of service yes. now and quality. Yes, um, and my name goes on it. Um, mm. You know, I hand personalise the note that goes out mm. um, that it's made by whoever it's made by. Mm. Um, and you know, if there's a problem, then they can come back to me. And luckily, I don't get people coming back to me. Mm. And if I do, um, then they get one 
back straight away or if the tile doesn't arrive because mm-hmm. it hasn't as in the case of one to South Africa I said don't worry we'll, we'll sort it out we'll, we'll get another one out to you um, so there's no quibble about um, mm. the service and um, what, what my customers get which is why they come back to me which is really nice Regular watchers of the Swab Channel know that I run the Ipswich branch of WIRE, Women in Rural Enterprise, and I know you found WIRE very early on with your business. Um, And how has that helped you? Oh, I think WIRE had literally changed my life. I was so lucky because I met a room full of women who had small businesses. I was feeling very nervous about setting up a business. I felt very unconfident. I didn't know what I was doing. So it's been a real journey for me. And what it's taught me is everybody is in the same boat. Everybody has different skills. So you can call upon and ask people for information, which has been literally vital to my business and and hopefully the success of it. I can then pass that information on because I've made loads of mistakes. Mm. But that's part and parcel of the business. And the lovely thing about WIRE is you meet monthly. So it's not too much of a stress about going every week. Mm -hmm. Um, There's no pressure to do a 60 seconds or um, give out your business card. Cards. It's a very natural environment, but it's a very helpful environment. You always learn something. Last week we had Claire Martinson mm. talk about her posh pop, and she gave some fantastic tips. Um, so you're you're always learning, um, and then you know if things aren't going too well. Maybe you don't want to go one evening. If you do go, you'll come back feeling rejuvenated. It just gives you that injection. It gives you that kick. So I think WAR is, is, has been fantastic for me and for lots of other women as well. I have seen you on occasion sort of come through the door with this kind of, it's been such an effort to get out tonight <laughs> type of thing, and you're a different mm. woman when you leave. Yeah, yeah, it is. It literally is a sort of injection of mm. um, enthusiasm to get back, in, uh, back mm. on track. And mm. It's quite lonely working from home, and it's very tough having your own business as a one-man band. Um, especially with the um, challenges of children and husbands and washing and cleaning and mm. and and everything else you have to do, you know, elderly parents. So it's it's um it's it's good. It's mm. it's very very rewarding. Well, this is uh, you know where my company with providing cleaners because obviously busy women, especially if they're running a business as well as children and dogs and everything else, um, they they're time poor, mm. very time mm. poor. They just mm. don't have time to do the regular run of the mill mm. things. Let's talk about some um, names because you must have seen some interesting ones over the years. I have, <laughs> I have. And I'll, often if I get a strange name, I look it up because I had one year, uh, last week called Ubald. Mm. Uh, and it sounded rather Nordic and um, I couldn't find um, an answer for what it meant. So I put out a tweet and then quickly I got a couple of replies mm. to what it meant. Strong and bold, I think. Mm. Um, but I get extraordinary things. Um, some rude, not very many, but... Um, um, uh, I, I love it because some are very unusual names, mm. um, and you and you you obviously get the classical names, um, but um, you you it's interesting. It is interesting. So you must have a record of all these. Names I do. Somewhere, I do. Actually. One of my sons had a friend, and he mm. said to me, Jane, how many towels have you made? And I said, well, I don't know, but I showed him my books, mm. um, and. Uh, uh, re- um, so I've got all my books with all my names. So maybe one day someone could write them all down—the <laughs> most popular name, <laughs> or how many towels I've made. Because uh, sometimes at Christmas, when I have an aching neck mm. and um, sore shoulders, I think to myself, "Well, Christmas Day, you know, loads of children are opening their towels, mm. and I've got children 25 years later who still got their towels." And those children are having children yes. themselves, yes. presumably. Yes. Yeah. So I'm doing the next generation now, which is fantastic. I know as well. You do the dressing gowns as well, don't yes. you? Yes. For the, the smaller people as well as adults. I do, I do. And they've been really popular. The age two to three has been really popular, actually. Because if they... Sometimes if they've... Um, I quite often get customers who want to do a set of towels. And then I can tell another set of customers wants to do a set of towels for the same child. Mm-hmm. And obviously I don't want to duplicate. So I get back to them and say... Did you know someone's already ordered a set of towels for them? And then they can order an organic... Um, hooded towel mm-hmm. or the little dressing gowns mm-hmm. um, and that's nice because that will also go on um, and it's something a bit different but it's still part of toweling mm. dressing gowns bathroom um. now you've got a very rich background in terms of where you've lived and traveled and everything haven't you where were you born I was born in Kenya um, in East Africa as were three of my sisters 
and then we moved to Ceylon, which is now known as Sri Lanka, and we lived in Cambodia, uh, Brussels, America, Louisville, Kentucky, and um, yes, and now I've ended up back in England. And okay, so you I have to ask how come you ended up in Suffolk? <laughs> I married an Englishman. I was going to go and live in Brussels and set up a, a company in Brussels and I never got there because I'd met a man and five days later he asked me to marry him oh. and I said yes please. <laughs> After five days yes. a whirlwind yes. romance. Yes and he'd never lived out of the country mm. and um, yes we, we were destined for Essex where my two children lived um, for many years and then we moved to Suffolk about five years ago. Mm which I absolutely love. Oh, it's amazing. Mm. I mean, I just think, I've been here six years, and so we're about the same time, mm. and I'm still discovering the delights of it, really. Mm. There's so many hidden yes. hidden gems. Yes. And, you know, we're great at so many things. Oh, there's so many small businesses, foodie companies, yeah. yes, and uh, lots of talent, mm. lots of art, drama. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, I know that... Um, Aside from running your business, you have a real passion for um, trying to bring sewing skills back into schools. Because I can remember at school, when I went to school, we did house um, housekeeping. I think it was economics, called. Totally economics. Yes, and it was it, sewing skills were part of that. Because I always remember I was rubbish at, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a compulsory subject. So yes. when did that stop? I think it stopped. I can tell from how old you know my, my sewers. Um, <laughs> I'm 53 now, and I think about 20 years ago, 25 years ago, it it, it became that you didn't it wasn't compulsory to have to do it. Um, I might be wrong on that, but um, I think it's a real shame because there are there are a couple of generations of people who literally can't thread a needle, and they they tell me they can't. Um, some people like you had bad experiences. Mm. Um, some people wished they could sew. Um, there is a resurgence um, of make, do and mend. If you speak to uh, sewing machine companies, the mm. sales of sewing machines have, have increased, as have knitting wools. Um, economic times are more difficult, and I think it's important we know how to mend things. Um, and also... It, in the olden days, it used to be cheaper to make your clothes. I mean, sadly, it's now you've got Primark and other uh, stores where mm. they sell very, very cheap clothes, which I disagree with. Mm. Um, and uh, But I think that's changing now. Um, but I think it's important to spend time with people. I think it's, I think when you create something, whether it be some carpentry or tapestry or cross stitch or knitting, you're spending time with somebody. Um, if you if you do it with someone or on your own doing something else like watching television, and you're creating something, and the feeling of satisfaction you get when you create something is fantastic. And I think for children with all the challenges of mobile phones and computers mm. and TV. I think it's really important to have other skills and spend time with people and switch those things off. Um, so why do you think it is that the schools took it out of the curriculum? I think they thought it wasn't as important. I think things changed hugely. Um, England has become uh, not, so, not so good at manufacturing anymore. It's all been outsourced to India and China. And um, However, that is changing because... It's no longer as cheap to produce things in China, so that's coming back. Um, I think people want quality as well, um, and that so things now are being made in England. And England traditionally, or Brit Great Britain, was 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 known for quality things. You know, we were the benchmark, voices. weren't yes, we? Yes, yes, yes. And that's changed now, mm. and I think people are fed up with cheap things mm. and things that fall to bits. Um, I think now there's a there's a sea change and people want quality and the, the amount of money they've got they want to buy things that are going to last mm -hmm. rather than buy things that that they're going to have to buy again in, in a few weeks mm. or a few months mm. time yes mm. I mean and that goes for everything even like electrical goods and, and stuff like that people are buying sort of the high end one brand names as opposed to mm. the lower cheaper value yes. ones for exactly the same yes. reason yeah, yeah. Interesting. So we've got a bit of battle on our hands to try and get some support for, for getting this back into 
to schools, but I'm with you. I think it's a basic life skill. You should be able to at least sew a button on mm. and take a hem up or something. Mm. You and know. Sue, it's cooking as well. Yes. You know, it's those mm. basic skills mm. which we need to get back on the agenda. Mm. I, I feel really strongly about it. Well, no, and I think you're not alone there. I think a lot of other people are trying in various ways to, to make people realise the importance of that because this these generations now, like you say, they've got one screen in front of them all the time. It's either their phone or their laptop or their netbook or their iPad or their computer screen. They're playing games on computers at home. Mm. They're becoming antisocial mm. as opposed to... You know, social media always makes me laugh because it's almost antisocial yes. as far as some yes. of them are yes. concerned. But I know social media has been very good for your business, hasn't it? You've got clients off it as well as, you know, you've been uh, had some support over it. When did you first start being a tweeter? I went to a WIRE meeting and there was somebody called Ian who um, gave us a lecture. I had dabbled in it and I didn't like it and I left it alone. And um, there were a lot of women in the room who were tweeting. So I thought, well, I know some people in here. Maybe I'll start to have a conversation with them. And I began to see that um, you could follow people and it was a bit like a cyber pub. Mm. You can like the look of someone and chat mm. to them mm. or not like the look of someone and actually leave it alone. Mm. And through that, you began to be- become more empowered with information. So mm. if you wanted something, you could ask for it. Mm. I needed a photographer, so I asked for it. Um, and, I, and, I got, and I got some results. Um, also, people write blogs. Um, I've got a lot of interest with charity, so I follow mm. charities. Mm. Um, I'm interested in the family, so I int- uh, follow people um, who who um, who have um, interest in children and babies and, mm. and family and um, sport. Um, plus, you've got the sort of downtime uh, mm. tweeting in the evening, maybe for the Olympics or Strictly Come Dancing. It's fun to follow the the feeds for those, isn't it? it and is. still have the actually be watching the Olympics, but follow yes. the tweet lines yes. for it as well, and it, people's comments. Oh, they, it can be absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Um, so, and I like, I think humour is important. Mm. So, I think Twitter can be very funny. Mm. I think as long as you don't get too bogged down with it and waste time on mm. it, I think it'd be a very useful tool, tool for your business. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you can put the odd tweet out about what's going on in your business, your changes you've made, you've launched a website, you might get some followers, you might get some people mm. ordering. But the most important thing is people you like and follow and people who follow you then say nice things about your product. So you don't have to bang on and do a hard sell. It's mm. not about that. It's about engaging. Mm. Um, and I've had uh, some fantastic opportunities. I've um, lectured to uh, some businessmen in, in Essex about tw- tw- Twitter. Mm. Um, and um, so that's enriched me as a person. Mm. Um, people can be very rude about it, but I think it's, it can be a useful tool. And mm. again, if you work from home, that mm. can be quite lonely. So you can um, spread spread the word. I mean, I've actually made friends from Twitter. How sad is that? But I have. No, but I, I'm completely with you on this because I frequently encounter people who look down their nose at it. They say, oh, Twitter, yes, I, I joined that, but I don't really see what all the fuss is about or something. And I think... No, because you haven't really engaged, you know, you've just opened an account and just sat there waiting for people to find you, you haven't really gone out and done anything with it, you know, which just with a modicum of training, just a little basic training, they could find it could turn their business around, you know. I have found cleaners from Twitter, I have had clients come to me from Twitter, and and referrals as well, which as you know, are the hardest kind of um, ones to get, where people, sort of existing clients or whatever, will will recommend Mm. you. So, but also the information, yeah, Sue. I, yeah. I wanted to know about drying some tomato mm. seeds um, because I wanted to plant them for next year. Mm. And I got the answer. Mm. Um, I found out that the Royal Ballet was dancing in Ipswich. Mm. You know, and I had an evening of ballet um, mm. by a fantastic ballet company. Um, you, ma- you mentioned your charity interests, and I know that you've recently become a befriender for Age UK. Um, what made you choose Age UK? It, again, it was wire. Um, we had somebody, a, a very interesting lady, um, who, we, who we all know, mm-hmm. who came to have a, some social media training in Twitter. She felt really strongly she did not want to do this and it was not going to be her bag. And she was actually quite rude to me on the night. And I, I, I smiled to myself because I thought she hadn't got it. 
And then she did get it. Um, and she told Jane, who would want to read your tweets? And I said, no, that's fine. And then I show, slowly showed her how it had helped me. And I think she had a eureka moment because she wanted to do it personally and for the, 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 the charity that she works for. And um, as a result, um, I think that's lifted the profile of Age UK in Suffolk, number one. Number two... Um, during, during the season of Lent, I, I kept thinking, oh, everyone's giving up things for Lent. That's quite a negative thing. Why don't, we, why don't I do something positive? So I thought, right, I'm going to go and I'm going to look into becoming a befriender for Age UK. I feel quite strongly about the elderly in this country. And so um, I, I applied and I thought it would take a couple of weeks took six months. You had to be CRB checked, you had to be trained, you had to be interviewed, inside leg measurement. Anyway, I finally became a befriender and um, do that every week, which I find incredibly rewarding. Um, so, so, yeah, so Good. that's what happened. Yeah. And that was, that's again through, was, mm. through WIRE, and I know that we support WIRE, WIRE supports Age UK mm. this year. Yes, so definitely the chosen charity, and like you, um, I mean, I encounter a lot of elderly people with my work as well, and uh, the work that we do providing the cleaners, it helps them to stay in their home just that little bit longer if they can get that bit of help that they need, because it happens to all of us, you know, trouble bending down and you can't yeah. do what you used to do, even yes. if, you know, there's nothing chronically wrong with you. Mm. It's just the general kind yes. of getting old process, yes. isn't it? Yes. All your friends are, you know, moving mm. or, you know, passing on mm. or whatever. Um, one of the other things I, I want to talk to you about as well is um, your children, because one of them's um, gone off to university, haven't they? Yes. My eldest daughter um, is in her third year at university. Mm -hmm. She's doing history and loving it. And my son is just about to go off up to Hull and, and do international relations and politics. So I should be on my own. <laughs> I should be an empty nester. Oh, do you think you're, you really think you're going to be an empty nester? No. I don't think it's going to be empty for very long. <laughs> and I know that you've started to fill some of your spare time with some sporting hobbies, haven't you? Yes. You just learned to play golf. I have. I have. I play tennis competitively. <clears throat> That's one of the things that I really enjoyed doing when I first moved to Ipswich because I felt it was quite. I was quite lonely to mm. begin with. Um, it's hard to meet people sometimes when you when you move and the, and mm. the local tennis team or tennis club were very very um, friendly, and I also cycle a lot. I cycle all around Ipswich, and um, through Twitter found out here found out about here come the girls, Alistair Spink, who's a, um, a, a coach at Finn Valley Golf Club does this program and I started it with one arm I'd actually damaged my shoulder and I could only play with one arm <laughs> I did that for two weeks but I'm absolutely hooked and it's great because I can my I played my husband and I never thought I'd be able to play with him because he's a very good golfer and I'm a really bad golfer but Alistair encourages you just to go and play on a golf course because there are a lot of hang-ups about golf you know about it being unreachable for sort of people who aren't very good, mm. that it's more of a sort mm. of top level type sport. Um, Does your husband know you go sneaking off to practice? No. <laughs> keep that very quiet. <laughs> Let's hope he's not watching this. <laughs> oh dear. So um, are you looking for anyone to help you with the business at the moment? I mean, if anyone's watching this program, for example, and they said, well, I can sew, she might be able to use me. Yes. Oh, definitely. Um, they can get in contact with me through my website, mm -hmm. send me an email, come and have a coffee, mm -hmm. to see what I do, see whether they, it's something they'd like to do. Um, always looking for new people, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And not just in the sort of immediate Felix so uh, Ipswich area? No. I mean, how it, it far can... afield would you, would you go? Um, Basically, um, Felix Stowe and um, probably about 10, 15 miles. Petrol's very, very expensive. Mm. So that is always, you have to be aware of costs. Mm. So what, what we do is we sort of, sometimes some of the girls come to me or I go to them or we meet halfway. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the closer the better, but I certainly don't rule out. One of, one of my ladies um, who I used to use um, was in East Berkhold. And um, it was on, um, near the Colchester border. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably about as far far as I would go. Yeah, it's still a fair distance, isn't it? Yeah, yeah to, twenty to go miles. Around. So, yes. so yes. Anyone watching this, if you are uh, a dap hand, if you can remember how to sew from your school days, <laughs> and you've been keeping it up since then, um, then do contact Jane. What's your website, Jane? It's janehamerton.com. That's with one M. Or one word. Yes. Okay. But if you Google 
Jane towels. Mm. Um, it'll say, did you mean Jane Hamilton? Yes, the, t- the Suffolk towel lady. They'll get called the cleaning lady. Yes. So there are worse things to be known by, I think. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. So Jane, I'd like to finish with um, uh, just some random fact you'd like to share with the audience about oh. uh, your life, anybody famous you've encountered? Well, or? one day I, I sat round a table in a, in a ski resort and... Um, my children will laugh at this because um, I have no idea who a lot of famous people are and I sat beside this man and I asked him what he did and I could see people blanch at the table. He was, some, I don't know if some of you know him, he was Conrad Bartelski, a very famous skier uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the sort of 80s I think it was and people just said, oh Jane, didn't you know who he was? And, <laughs> Conrad Bartelski. I'll have to go and Google him now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know who he is either. Right, well, here we go. Mr. Towel is going back to Miss Hamilton. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you very much for your time this morning, Jane. It's been really interesting. Thank you, Sue. Thank you for having me.